What's up guys, it is Scorpio, your favorite designer's favorite designer. We are back with our second installment underneath the Nomi Pattern brand. This time we had just dropped our new spring pattern. Now, before we get started with anything, I gotta show love and big ups to everyone that supported your boy with his first pattern drop, that Varsity Bomber jacket. The sales were crazy, the numbers were dumb. This January jacket challenge y'all did on TikTok was absolutely crazy. I love you guys for it. I wanna give a special shout out to everyone at the Black Sewing Network. You guys made these past few months for me not only a very humbling moment, but it made it very fun to sew again. And the support that you guys showed me Carmen, the Black Sewing Network, Terrence, all you guys who supported the Know Me Pattern brand, it's much love. So now I got something special in store for you guys this time around. First time it was that bomber jacket, we killed the game with it, short, three quarter length version, y'all killed it. With this drop, with this right here, I took it to another level. Not only did I do the top, which I'm wearing right now, lightweight windbreaker jacket, we got the half zip, we got the oversized collar, we got the oversized front pocket, but not only that, not only that, we made pants, y'all. We made pants. We made pants, okay? It's a color block. It's a paneled, two-tone pant with the inside zip at the hem. Now, the waistband at the back is going to be elastic. The front half is going to be your regular button fly pant. I'm talking about you can use any lightweight fabric, knits, cotton, whatever you want. Stretch fabrics, of course. As you know, that's how we get down. If you haven't copped it, make sure you go cop it. Scan the barcode, get hit with this so long, and let's get to it, guys, all right? All right, here we got the Know Me 2017 with your boy on it. Look at me looking dapper and handsome. All right, turn it over. We are going to be doing the top jacket, version A. I'm going to be using snap uh, buttons, but you can also use the Velcro. Version B is going to be the pants with the zipper. All right, first one up, we have the number one piece that is going to be with the upper front fold on the hem. Number two is going to be the lower front. Again, that is going to be cut on the fold. Number three is going to be the front pocket. You are going to cut on the fold as well. Number four is the flat for the jacket. You're gonna be cutting on the fold. That's gonna go obviously over the front for the pocket. Number five is going to be the back. That's also gonna be cut on the fold. Number six is going to be the sleeve. It's gonna be slightly oversized. As you can see, you're gonna be cutting two of these. This is not gonna be cut on the fold because it's for both your sleeves. Number seven is gonna be the sleeve casing. That's where the elastic is going to go in. You can make this as thick as you want to. You're gonna cut two. Number eight is the elastic guide for the sleeve casing, really self-explanatory. Number nine is gonna be the neck band. This you're gonna cut on the fold as well with some interfacing if you choose to. Number 10 is gonna be the front facing for the neck band and the half zip. You're gonna cut on the fold and interface if you choose to, depending on the fabric. Number 11 is the back neck facing. You're gonna cut on the fold. This is gonna to connect to your front facing, forming a facing for your whole neck piece. Number 12 is the front casing. That's gonna be, you're gonna cut two of these on the fold and that's going to go towards the front. 13 is gonna be the back casing and that is going to be obviously at the back. 14 is gonna be the elastic guide for the lower edge of the jacket. All right, so here we have the front pocket piece, number three, uh, big green. You see I transferred my markings for my snap buttons. Uh, what you're gonna wanna do is you're going to turn it over. I just do a double fold at the top and then I turn the sides in about half an inch. You're gonna go ahead and baste these down. As you can see, I went ahead and basted it and then I top stitched it on the front. You see these markings. I'm going to use my snap button kit to go ahead and apply the bottom half of those snap buttons using small little sizers, incisors to poke the holes. Here's my kit. Just remember, just doing the bottom part of the snap buttons. All right, real clean, simple, using the hammer to hammer them in. Again, it's just the bottom part of the button because you're going to be attaching the top on the pocket flap so it will connect. All right, so number two piece, we are going to be using our front. This is gonna be the lower front. We're gonna attach our 
pocket to it, you should be transferring the markings over to it. You see it fits nicely. Again, this is gonna be an oversized front pocket. Now on the sides, you're gonna to want to go ahead and stitch those down. Then you're going to do a top stitch and then you could do an edge stitch if you want. Um, you could see here, it's forming the nice little pocket and you can see that I did two rows of top stitching and it turned out really nice. So number four, like I said, that's going to be the flap for your pocket. You're gonna be cutting two of those. You can interface them if you want to, but this windbreaker material is really light and I wanna keep it like that. Don't want it to be stiff. I went ahead and stitched it down five eighths of an inch. This, I'm cutting some, I'm cutting sn snippets in it because you know on the curves, you want it to maintain that curve. Turn it inside and out. Then I'm using my hemp roll to go ahead and iron it down because I want to get these seams down flat with nylon. It's kind of, it's a little tricky. All right, so I got it laid flat. I went ahead and attached it to the front pocket. As you can see, the markings transfer over to the buttons nicely. Now we're using, this is the upper part of the front. Uh, that I'm gonna be tracing out what's going to be the half zip stitch box. I'm using this little, um, I guess you could say trace pen that I picked up on Amazon, which it goes away when you iron on. So now I stitched down the box, as you can see, and we're gonna treat this just like we do any welt pocket. We're gonna cut it down the middle, not all the way, form the triangle at the end of the stitch box, making sure you don't cut into the stitch. And again, you can interface this part if you want to, but like I said, I'm keeping mine light, using my little snippets to get into the corner. I wanna make sure this jacket looks as airy as possible. I don't want it stiff in any area. So very little interfacing being used. All right, here I've attached to the top of my snap buttons. They fit good. Now I'm gonna attach the, the top half of my front piece. Obviously it's gonna be curved. You wanna do five eighths of, of, five eighths of an inch on the sewing machine. And then what I did is I overlocked, use an overlocker stitch to seal it. Then I went ahead and did a top stitch, double rows like I did on the side of the pocket. See, nice. This is a great color green, by the way. Like this is fire. I love it. All right, so everything's looking good. Now you can see the craftsmanship. Look at that. Yeah, boy. Okay. So number five, that's the back. We cut it on the fold. That's pretty self-explanatory. Right sides together. We are going to attach at the side seams because we are going to be inserting our sleeves in this next step. So go ahead, go ahead and stitch that down five eighths of an inch. And I did a double top stitch as well. Now with the sleeve, go ahead and stitch the sides seams of your sleeve together. As you can see, five eighths of an inch. Basically everything is gonna be five eighths of an inch. It's pretty standard now. Now, one thing I did was with this pattern, the sleeve, the cuff was really, really massive because you know, technically I'm plus size in the fashion world, even though I'm not. So I know I wanted to adjust it down to the sleeve that I like. I like a 10 and a half, 12 inch uh, sleeve cuff, but just realize when you do that to the sleeve, you gotta do it to the cuff as well, the sleeve casing. So that's me adjusting for the sizing right now. But again, you can keep it in like its normal length. I think normal is like 18, which is like massive. I feel like two of my arms can go in there. So I just went ahead and cut it down. Here I stitched right sides together on the sleeve casing, transferring the markers, making sure I don't sew it all the way through. Then I flip it, wrong sides, well, wrong sides connecting so the right sides are out. You should see a little slip inside. That's to be tested to get out on my sleeve. That's the slip to make sure it's open. That's where you're gonna be attaching the elastic guy to. And then right sides together, making sure raw edges are together. You're going to stitch the sleeve casing with the bottom of your sleeve. And then once you do that, you can turn it inside out. You should have that little slit right inside. Here's my elastic. This is my elastic guide thingamabobber that I got from Amazon. If you need where to get this, hit me up. Slide it through, make both ends meet, and you are good to go. Now again, sleeve right side facing. Now your jacket is going to be inside out and everything fits perfectly. You're gonna stitch that down five eighths of an inch and voila, you should have your sleeve. Then you'll be able to attach it right there at the sides with the jacket, double row, top stitching, of course. Now for the neckband, 
This is the interesting part. <laughs> All right, so I know it says, I think it's like four, I added three inches because again, it didn't capture the swag that I really wanted it to uh, on my line drawing. And I wanted it to have like an oversized collar because everything I do is big. All right, so once you do that, again, interface if you want to, attach it to your collar. Then you're gonna flip it up like you see here. Now you're gonna have this long edge. This is where you're gonna be attaching your zipper. Of course, your boy is gonna be using a bright color zipper to go with his bright color jacket. All right, so you're gonna attach that face down using a zipper foot. You're going to base stitch that in. So yeah, face down. You can stitch it in place if you need to using a zipper foot outside edge of the zipper to the outside edge of the half zip. And you go ahead and stitch that down. All right, so once you do both sides, look at this beauty, beautiful. All right, and then once you flip the jacket inside out, you're gonna do the same thing for the other side of the zipper. And then once you're done, you should have a beautiful zipper stitched in place looking fresh to death. Look at that, go ahead and test it out, make sure the zipper goes well. Now, next thing is we gotta do the facing for the neck and the half zip. Those are gonna be pieces 11 and 10. You're gonna go ahead and stitch those right sides together, 5 eighths of an inch stitch. All right, should look like this. And then of course, I'm anal retentive, so I had to make sure I had a finished seam edges, well, finished raw edges of that. You go ahead, jacket, right side out. You're gonna put this right sides together, stitch that in. Then you should be able to flip that on the inside. You're gonna get this beautiful thing. Now, go ahead and top stitch around the collar, around the half zip, and the neck band. All right, so now we are going to be dealing with the front and back casings. These you should have cut out already. You're going to attach them at the sides. Now remember, you're cutting two of each, so it's going around your whole body. I'm not that skinny, guys, I promise you. But make sure you keep the same stitch. Go ahead and stitch that down. Use your elastic. Here's my elastic thingamabobber. Again, I'm gonna attach it. I'm gonna run it through, and then doggone it, we gonna have ourselves a waistband at the bottom. Go ahead and check it out. You wanna make sure you marvel in the beauty of what you have just created, guys. The pocket looking good, the pocket is pocketing. You know I had to add the tag so we know it's real. And that's it, guys. We All right, we halfway, shawty. We did the top, now it's time for the pants. All right, 15, that's gonna be the front for both versions, B and C, but what we're doing B today, you're gonna cut two of that. 16 is going to be, well, it would be the front pocket. Um, that's what we're gonna be using. Remember, we're using version B, which is gonna be the zipper. We're not doing the front pockets. All right, 17, front panel. You're gonna cut two of those. 17, that, oh, sorry, that was 17. 18 and 19, that is the right fly and the left fly facing. That's gonna be an interesting part, never done that before. 20 is going to be the back of our legs. You're gonna cut two of those, as you know, because no one has just one. Well, we do, but you know what I mean. 21 is gonna be the back pocket. We're gonna be doing two of those. And 22 is going to be the back panel. That's gonna be the waistband at the back that's gonna be elastic. 23 is the carriers, AKA the belt loops. Didn't know they were called carriers, that's a fancy name. 24, that's gonna be the right front waistband. 25 is gonna be the left front waistband, okay? We're not cutting two of these, we're just cutting one, but just know one's right, one's left. Make sure you label them, transfer your markings. 26, that's going to be the back waistband. All right, so like I said, piece number 15, that's gonna go with the front panel. That's gonna be number 17. Now together, they're gonna to form one whole leg again. This is a very big pattern. You may have to adjust it. I surely did because my thighs are not this big. I am muscular, but I ain't that muscular. Now, another thing, in the line drawing, it was not long enough. So on the front of the, the front of the pattern, you'll see that it's kind of high waters on me. I wanted it to be a little more stacked. So I'm adding three inches to my pant leg. You may want to do the same. If you do want to check it out, do the muslin first, okay? Now I've attached the front panel to the front leg. Beautiful contrasting colors that'll overlock stitch to lock it in place. Now this is gonna be, I transferred the markings for the zipper, went ahead and added the interfacing to the stitch box. That is the black zipper that I'm gonna use, gives it very good contrast to the pant. I know what y'all thinking, all right? Went ahead and made the slits in the stitch box, going ahead and slide that right on enough, okay? 
Now you're gonna add to the top, the top of the zipper, you're going to add to the bottom of that stitch box flap, okay? See what I mean? You're gonna stitch that down. Now 16 is that front pocket. It's gonna get a little tricky, you gotta roll with me, okay? Now 16 is the front pocket. Make sure it's the right way. I made that mistake. You're gonna attach that to the same, line it up evenly with that zipper, okay? And I want y'all to know that these beautiful pins were provided to me by Bernina. So I'm gonna rock them till I die. <laughs> All right, go ahead and base that down. Flip it all inside out. And you should have a top edge. You should have the top edge of the zipper now, not as flipped, it's free, right? Now go ahead and iron this down using the Mimi G Time Oliso collaboration iron that I got. <laughs> big ups, big shout out to Mimi. And you wanna go ahead and stitch that bottom part of the stitch box. You see that nice and clean? Ooh wee. <laughs> okay, now the open part of that zipper that's left and the top of the stitch box, and then the bottom of that pocket that you flipped inside out. You're going to baste that all three stitches through. Now, I know it sounds difficult, but you gotta visualize it, okay? Again, with the pink bobbins, you stitch that, then you can iron it down, and then of course, we're gonna top stitch the rest of that box, and boom, Bob's your uncle. We got ourselves a zipper pocket. You're gonna do that times two on the other leg as well. Look at this thing, ooh. <laughs> My God. All right, so of course we wanna finish the stitching on the pocket because you don't wanna put things in there and it falls out. That would look really funny, okay? I went ahead and transferred on my, the zipper flap. Now you wanna add both sides of the inside seams of the front legs together. Now you only wanna go down to that marking, all right? I made that mistake and I stitched all the way through. They do it for a reason. I thought they were a little crazy, but. They did it for a reason, guys, okay? Trust the markings, stitch all the way through, just those three, four inches. Then on the right side, you're gonna turn that in about a quarter to half an inch. Go ahead and iron that down. Insert your zipper on that same side. And you're gonna base stitch that. Now with your facings, go ahead and stitch them together like so. I did add an interfacing to that because I do want that part to be stiff. You don't want that to be, you definitely do not want that to be the soggy part of your pants, all right? No one wants a saggy crotch. All right, you go ahead, 5 eighths out of a stitch, seam allowance right here. There's some real-time stitching for some reason people don't think I actually uh, sew my own clothes, but you know, decided to switch it up this time around. All right, go ahead and add the slits. You wanna maintain the curve. And when you turn it inside out, make sure you iron it. Make sure it's nice and patent. Trim the seam allowance down to about a quarter of an inch. All right, so now you have that. A Little bit of a trick to this next part. Like I said, it's my first time ever doing it, but it actually really did turn out nice, okay? So now you see the flap. The flap is flapping, the pop, okay? This is the zipper flap. You're gonna put that over the open part of the zipper. Now guys, this part of your instructions uh, that are part of the instructions in the thing, it's actually really, really good. So you wanna make sure you follow that intrinsically, okay? So once you base stitch that down, you're gonna do the other side of the facing over it. And you should have this. So iron this part down. Now I remember, once you do that, you're gonna fold it over. This is the left side that we're doing now. You're gonna fold it over. The flap that we've made, you're folding it over. Iron that down so that crease is nice and solid. You wanna understitch that so it stays patent like that, okay? Now, the right side flap that's open and exposed, you wanna fold that back, pin that so it's out of the way. I hope you're rocking with me. This is the only difficult part we have, guys, all right? Now, once you've done that, fold over the left leg. The open flap on the left side you're going to stitch the zipper down like you would a normal zip fly, okay? You can choose what part you wanna do. So once you base stitch that down, now those two parts of your front legs are together, all right? Make sure your zipper is good. Make sure the folding over the crease on the left side actually covers your zipper. And now you're gonna finally go and stitch that rest of that zipper part down. After that, you make sure everything's looking right, everything's looking tight, as you can see it is. 
And I went ahead and just put some double tax on it so it keeps it real. You know what I'm saying? I wanted to stay in place. No one likes a saggy crotch, okay? Now we're moved on to the back. Part pieces 20 and 22. That's the back panel and the back piece. Now, only part I'm going to say is I did not do zippers on the back because I wanted to switch it up. So I'm doing a regular pocket piece. You can still do the zippers. The same thing that we did on the front. I'm just doing a regular pockets on the back. I'm doing it on both. Again, the pink bobbin, stitching it down, making sure it's nice and good. Stiff, not saggy because you don't want things to fall out. I did it on both sides. Looking good. So now with right sides together, we have the front pieces that are gonna be facing up. We got the back pieces that are gonna be facing down right on top, so right sides together, okay? Now we're going to be attaching the two contrast panels together, okay? We're gonna attach them on the inside parts of the legs, inside parts only, okay? So then, once we finish that, you're gonna see kind of like a starfish configuration, all right? So we're gonna have the back pieces that are not gonna be connected at uh, the back seam yet, and we're gonna have the front pieces kind of like straggling away, okay? So now, Right sides together again, right back, front. Now you're gonna connect the two back pieces at that back seam, all right? Visualize it, two back pieces at the back seam, right? And we're gonna go through the stitched contrast fabric part that we did, all right? So back seam all the way down through the panel. All right, so that's that. Now we have those two together, okay? You can overlock stitch, you can take it to the surgeon, to finish it, do what you wanna do, okay? Now the next part, now we're going to be connecting the back pieces, the front pieces at the side seam, all right? Make sure you only go down to the dot. You're gonna reinforce at that dot, don't forget the back stitch, then you're going to fold it back over about a half an inch. Iron it down, again, with the Mimi G times Oliso collaborative iron, okay? Now, with your zip, right, now you have both sides, you have them ironed down about a quarter of an inch, you're gonna insert your zipper. Really easy part right here. It's okay if your pant hem goes a little longer than the zipper, you're gonna be folding it up anyway. You're going to make sure you stitch down. Then you're gonna do a double fold at the hem to match the length of your zipper and you should have something that looks as fuego as this. Okay, guys, it's all downhill from here, okay? Here's the carriers, AKA the belt loops, gonna make that trick happen, boom, okay? Now, adding, remember we cut two pieces off on the, we cut two of the sides of the, uh, the front and the back waistband, okay? We're gonna capture the belt loops, as you can see here. Capturing the belt loops. Then we put the second, the second piece of the waistband on. We're gonna stitch that together. Boom, 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 and there you go. There you have it. Now, remember that slit that we kept, because again, the back part of the waistband is going to be elastic. So again, the thingamabobber for the third time with the elastic, we're gonna sew it through, all the way through, and it's good with this contrast fabric so you know exactly where to stop. Then once you're done, you're going to just stitch that in, right there at the seam, stitch in the ditch, as they say, and look, we got ourselves a waistband, okay? Marvel at it, it's beautiful, look at this, it's easy. It's easy. All right, so go ahead and zip that back up. We are going to do the next part, which is adding die buttons, okay? One button, choose what you want. I'm doing this black one with a little tint of gold to match the zipper. Add that in and boom, Bob's your uncle, guys. You see this little thing thingamabobber? It makes buttonholes cutting so much easier. Look at that, one, two, and three for good measure. Just so you know it's real, bam, look at it. All right, zip it up. Test it out, put the button through. Look at that. Look at God. Belt loops good, pockets fresh, zipper, patent, not saggy. We ain't losing nothing. Back pockets, uh-oh, waistband, elastic, there we go. Color block panel in there, like swimwear. Guys, we finished, look at that. Thank you guys. Oh my god. Oh my god. Y'all, we absolutely killed that pattern. Big ups to you guys. If you were able to follow along, yo. 
straight up. And although I look like a big green highlighter on video, you already know I'm gonna come correct these pictures and they are about to bleed. Fuego. All right. All right. So for everyone who followed, thank you guys. I hope it. I hope you had some clarity in the instructions because we know how that can go. If you have any questions, hit me on the DMs. Make sure you follow me for the next drop, and the next drop after that, and the next drop after that. Because you already know, I keep bringing heat. I'm gonna keep bringing heat. But these fall drops, I'm telling you. <sighs> y'all make sure y'all follow me, man. IG, TikTok, at Sins of Many. Follow at Know Me Patterns. Follow all the amazing designers underneath there. We keep it real. We keep it Gucci. All right, guys. So until next time, you already know how we get down. Your boy Scorpio signing out. Peace.